Now these recent bank closures have caused all kinds of trouble guys. That is undeniable. It's causing all kinds of trouble throughout our economy, the banking system. It's causing uncertainty with what the Fed's going to do at their meeting next week. But also puts me in a strange position as a content creator because as you guys know, my main focus is real estate. It has been for the longest time and that's not going to change. However, in the light of these recent bank closures, it's important to cover what's going on with this because everything is going to be affected by these bank closures. And to not talk about it is like talking about the housing market without covering where interest rates are, without covering inventory, without covering anything like that that ultimately affects where the housing market's headed. So to just ignore the banking situation and say this isn't important, we're not going to talk about this, we're only going to talk about the housing market is foolish right now and I'm not going to do that. I'm also not going to be making every single video about the banking system either. I'm going to alternate and make videos about it when appropriate, when I have things to share and then of course we're also going to cover real estate stories within those videos. So. Don't worry, the channel is still gonna be mainly real estate and overall economy focused. Just know that you're probably gonna see more banking stories come in the next several weeks because this is such a huge deal. So the first thing I wanna cover here when it pertains to banks is Credit Suisse, okay? These guys look to be the next bank that could potentially collapse right now. Their share price has just plummeted because Saudi National Bank which is Credit Suisse's largest investor, they said that they're not going to be providing any more funding. And what this does is it not only decreases faith in the banking system, but it also puts Credit Suisse in a vulnerable position where they could go by the wayside just like Silicon Valley and Signature did earlier in the week. Once again, guys, we're not talking about this to scare anyone or to make people you know, totally fearful. We're, we're talking about this because it's happening, it's a fact, and it cannot be ignored because it has such a large impact that it's going to affect everything else in our daily lives. So the reason why we cover these type of things is to make sure that you know what's going on and when you know what's going on, it makes it easier to make important decisions in your life like should I buy a house right now? Where should I put my money? Which banks are potentially dangerous to have your money in? And things like that. Listen to this. Prior to this situation with Credit Suisse's share prices going down because Saudi decided not to invest any more funds into the company, Credit Suisse has been so desperate for money, which was already a big warning sign that they were offering wealthy depositors that deposit $3 million or more a six and a half percent interest rate to park their money in Credit Suisse. And why would they be doing that, guys? Why would a bank offer somebody six and a half percent interest rate? Do you know of a bank where you can get a six and a half percent interest rate right now? No, right? So why would a bank like Credit Suisse be offering this to its very wealthy potential clients? Well, the only reason is because they need the money, guys, and they likely are not in a position to cover a ton of withdrawals all at once, similarly to Silicon Valley. So they figure, oh, if we can get a bunch of people to uh, deposit a bunch of money with us, then we'll be able to cover potential withdrawals in this event. And there was signs of trouble with Credit Suisse way before this as well. In fact, it was pointed out by one of my subscribers a couple of months ago when I made a video in January about my own mortgage situation because my mortgage is financed with Select Portfolio Services and it turns out that Credit Suisse owns Select Portfolio Services. And I got a letter from them back in January, this is the video right here if you want to go look at it, saying that, hey, we would like you to pay your loan back in full uh, and we'll give you the chance to do that with no penalty right now. And you know, there's no, nothing in it for you, no incentive, no lower interest rate. This isn't a refinance off or anything like that. We're just asking you politely if you'll pay us back. That's basically what this letter was, guys, and I'm not making this up. You can go back, watch that video, 
and see the letter that I was sent by them. And it made me wonder, why would a bank be doing this? Why would a lending company be doing this right now if everything is so great? Well, they're doing it because they need the money, guys. That's what's going on. And a lot of this happens under wraps. You know what I mean? Like, uh, not everybody got letters like this. So people that don't get these type of letters might think, oh, everything's fine with the banking system. There's no trouble. And um, it's business as usual right now. When in fact, certain people like me were able to start seeing the cracks form because we just happen to get letters like this. And once you start seeing things like this happen, it makes you wonder, well, what's going on? You know, why are they asking me to pay back uh, the loan balance on a 30 year mortgage after it's only been one year? Makes no sense, right? It's important for everyone to understand that all of this is a big deal right now. I'm gonna do another video separate from this one talking about what implications that I think it's going to have on the housing market because I have more things to cover in this video still that I think that topic kind of deserves its own video. Besides all these problems with Credit Suisse and the bank collapses that we've been covering, here's a couple other things to watch out for. Another side effect of all of this is going to be a huge credit crunch coming. And we've talked about this before as well in the prior months. And what does that mean? What is a credit crunch? Well, I'll tell you. It means that now that this has happened with Silicon Valley and Signature, and now potentially Credit Suisse coming next, ready to fold up shop, what this is gonna do is it's going to cause other banks to be far more cautious with lending moving forward and it's going to tighten the amount of lending that they're going to be offering. So for example, you know, banks that were writing a thousand mortgages a month, well, maybe now they're gonna go down to be writing only, you know, 600 a month or something. They're gonna tighten that up. Same thing when it comes to personal loans or home equity loans, whatever, because they now need to keep more cash on hand so they're not gonna be the next ones to fail in case there is another bank run with their bank. You know what I'm saying? So the reality is that the ripple effects from this huge banking crisis that we're experiencing at the moment has not even been felt yet. That's the reality, guys. Like, we don't know what's gonna exactly happen yet, and that's why it's important to talk about it right now because there's so many things developing on a daily or, or really an hourly basis. And so this latest thing is how big of trouble Credit Suisse is in, and I think you're very likely to see them be the next one that's going to fold up shop. Maybe you guys are like me, you're getting letters or emails from your bank saying, oh, don't worry, you know, we're well protected right now. I got one from my business checking account, as you can see here, saying that, uh, you know, everything's fine with us, so don't worry. And um, yeah, I don't know who, who to believe anymore, guys. I don't know if, even know if I believe my own bank but at least they're not on the list of banks that uh, could be in trouble right now. And here's something else that was brought to my attention by somebody in my neighborhood through the Nextdoor app, and this is something that you might want to take a look at as well. This could easily happen to you guys, so pay attention to this. Here's what this guy said. Be careful when depositing cash at the ATM in North Beach on Collins Avenue. I won't say which bank, but please double check your cash before depositing and check your receipts. Three times I have deposited cash and it was not what I deposited. This time I have to file a claim to get back almost $1,600, which was not counted at all. Just a heads up. And that's a huge heads up, guys. Now, maybe there's something wrong with this ATM. Maybe it's an isolated incident. I don't know, but you guys let me know. If something like this has ever happened to you, put it in the comments below, because it's extremely important for other people to know about this right now. If you know people are getting ripped off at the ATM, if you're depositing $500 and it says you only put four in, well, that's a big problem. And that could be another secret way that banks are in trouble and ripping people off, or maybe it's just you know a mechanical error, right? Now shifting back to real estate for a moment, listen to this. You guys have seen those signs posted on the side of the road that say something like, we buy houses for cash, doesn't matter the condition, whatever, right? And 
you see them all over the place. It's not just here in Florida, they're everywhere. And what these guys are doing is they're trying to make a quick dollar off of people that don't know any better or maybe people that just want a quick sale with their house and don't want to go through the traditional methods of having a real estate agent list their home for sale and this that and the other thing if you go with one of these wholesalers you could be leaving a ton of money on the table guys there was a recent report out of philadelphia saying that if you sell to one of these wholesale investors you might lose up to 51 percent of your home's value by selling to one of these people, which is roughly about $126,000. And if you think about it, Philadelphia is a pretty affordable market compared to lots of areas here in Florida or California or even Texas now. And places like this where real estate's a lot more expensive than Philadelphia. So you could be leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table by selling your house to one of these wholesale investors. And this report outlines the fact that between 2018 and 2022, these wholesalers captured about $500 million in home equity from home sellers that didn't know any better. That just said, yeah, you know, I'll sell it to you. No big deal. I just want to get out of this house, okay? So people are leaving a ton of money on the table by selling to these people. Here's the warning, guys. You heard it from me. So if you, if you don't want to get ripped off with your home sale, you better make sure you're not going to be selling your property to one of these we buy houses for cash companies because guaranteed they're going to pay you way less than what you would get if you were to sell it through a real estate agent. And it is a fact, if you list your home with a real estate agent, that you will get more money than if you were to sell to one of these investors. Even if you were to do for sale by owner, people who list with a real estate agent typically get 10% more, maybe the figure's higher than that. So as much as people like to uh, say that real estate agents are useless and thieves and all of this, well, the, the reality is, guys, that's how you're gonna get the most money from the sale of your home, providing you hire the right agent, of course. If you need a reason to hire a real estate agent, this should be it right here, because the last thing you want is to get ripped off right now. Now here's the next thing, inflation, the new numbers just came out this week and it is still a huge problem guys. In fact, the CPI rose 0.4% in February. It already went up 0.5% in January. So that's almost a 1% increase in just two months. And that's a big problem because now that we've had these bank failures, the Fed is in this situation where, man, what are we gonna do? Are we going to pause our interest rate hikes? There's a lots of talk that maybe at their meeting next week that they're not going to raise rates at all this time, or if they do, it's just gonna be 25 basis points because before they were considering a bigger hike of maybe 50 basis points, possibly even 75. And now this banking crisis may have changed all of that. And while we don't know that yet, here's what's really important from this. The largest contributing factor to inflation going up was the increase in shelter costs. According to the latest CPI figures, shelter accounted for 70% of the inflation increases that we saw in February. But you guys should take a look at this graph on the CPI report for yourselves because when you look at it, the interesting thing is the things that we need the most as humans to run our daily lives are the things that are going up the most in cost right now. And it's undeniable by looking at the charts, guys. When you look at food, okay, food costs alone are up 9.5% year over year right now, okay? And that's all types of food. You got energy costs that are up 5.2%. That's things like filling your car up with gas. But it gets worse from there because when you look at utilities like your natural gas bill and your electric bill, that is up big time, guys. That's up 13.3% year over year right now. And that is a big problem. You see in California that people's gas bills are going through the roof. Here in Florida, 
We got notices at the end of last year that our electric bills would be going up in 2023 and this is happening to everybody everywhere across the board. This is not unique to just the expensive states. This is happening to everyone. And even when you subtract food and energy from the equation, all other items on the list for the CPI are still 5.5% more expensive now than they were a year ago. And that's if you go by these CPI numbers, which a lot of people don't like to believe or trust because the way they calculate CPI now is far different than how it used to be back in the 80s, last time we had this huge spike in inflation. Oh wow, talk about a price cut. Look at this place. They were asking $8,500 a month for rent, cut it to $6,500. Now they're down to $5,900 less than one month after it was listed and still nobody has rented the place. That is a huge cut in less than a month. So these people are clearly desperate to get someone in this house. So make your offers guys. And that's why next week is also going to be a huge week for news because everything is gonna be all eyes on the Fed guys. Where and It's crazy too because the Fed is not even part of our federal government, but somehow they dictate everything it, as far as our economy goes, because where interest rates go will shift everything, you know? It's criminal that the Fed has that much power, even though they're basically a private corporation and they're not elected officials, not like our elected officials are doing much better for us anyways right now, but it's all eyes on the Fed. Whatever they do next week, is going to have a massive influence on where the economy is going to go for the rest of this year. And you know things are not going well when even people are not buying chicken, or at least it seems that way, because when you look at the Tyson Chicken Company, yeah, they're laying off 1,700 people this week, guys. They're closing two of their poultry plants. They're closing one of them in Arkansas and another one in Virginia. And they're saying that the reason that they're closing these plants is because the production is gonna be shifted to other plants that are more efficient, and that's why they're gonna be shutting this one down, on top of the fact that chicken prices have been coming down. But Tyson did say that they're gonna be helping their employees uh, try to get jobs at other plants in different areas of the country. So who knows if people are actually gonna pick up and move just to work at a different Tyson plant. More than likely, probably not. These guys are losing a lot of money. In fact, their chicken business went down to 69 million for the quarter, and a year ago it was at 140 million, guys. So their amount of chicken that they're selling and the amount of money they're bringing in from this has been cut more than in half in just one year. And get this, period ending December 31st of 2022, their profit went down to 316 million, right? Compared to 1.1 billion a year earlier. You're talking a $700 million difference in one year. And this was the company's largest year over year decline in quarterly net income since when? 2009. I mean, you cannot write a better story than what's happening right now. And unfortunately, you know, this isn't great news for a lot of people, but it is 2008 all over again, but worse, guys. Just like we've been talking about here for a long time, so many people have been in denial of it, but now the problems are mounting up and it's becoming undeniable at this point. And look at this. Shares of Tyson, okay, their stock, have fallen nearly 33% over the last 12 months. And that's the bingo moment right there, guys. I said this a few months ago in a video that if you work for a company that is publicly traded on the stock market right now, you should be really paying attention to your company's stock price because it's almost a guarantee at this point that if your company's stock has been losing a lot of value over the past year, you're almost guaranteed to see layoffs coming to a town near you if you work at one of these companies because that's how they stop the bleeding, okay? When you see any company that has lost 20, 30% or more of their stock price in just the last year, it's a recipe for layoffs. And 
We know this because we've seen this time and time again over the last several months and you can pretty much trace it back to almost every company that has done a layoff in the past year has also seen big losses in their profit margins and likely their stock price has fallen pretty sharply as well. So you don't have to be a genius to track this and just realize that, hey, uh, if the stock price is going down, maybe I, I might be getting a layoff notice soon. Probably gonna be a good time to just start shopping around for other jobs just in case. Doesn't mean you have to take one, but hey, better to be safe than sorry, right? I always like going the route of being more prepared. So all of the signs of this recession are really starting to mount up, guys. And if things continue to falter at this pace, we can even be on track to be going into a depression rather than a recession. But, you know, we're not going to jump the gun and, uh, you know, say that for sure that's what's happening until it does. But we definitely need to start watching this right now. I'm pretty sure right about now, all the people that have been saying that the economy is fantastic and the jobs numbers are fantastic and inflation's been going down are probably shaking in their boots right about now realizing that their initial impression of how things are going probably aren't correct if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you click the bell notification down below youtube will alert you every time i post a new video and if you don't want to wait check out my next one on the screen right over here and i'll see you in the next one